So today we are finishing up section 8.3. Um, I would say number five is probably the hardest of the problems that we have left. Um, but if you have this calculator, they're going to be super easy. Um, so anytime you have to find exact values for trig functions or trig values, um, this calculator is super helpful because it can give you answers in terms of radicals. We did. We finished with number four the other day. I, I had to check and make sure um, on my notes. Let me pull them up just to make sure. Um, but I want to say that we finished with number four. We didn't. We didn't. Oh, oh that's right. That's right. We, we took off number four. Uh, we, we're not doing any of the, um, what are those called? The power reducing identities. Yes, yeah, so we did skip number four. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. All right, so like I said, anytime you see these directions determine the exact value of this calculator is going to be super helpful. Um, so if you have this calculator, you can just type in the expression and it's going to give you the answer. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do this by hand if you're using your graphing calculator. Um, I just checked in this graphing calculator, um, which is the TI-84 plus CE, and it cannot um, give you an exact value. It's going to give you a decimal answer. So if you have um, a graphing calculator, that's totally fine. You can do this by hand. It's not terribly difficult. Um, it's just that number six and number seven are, um, they're pretty easy. All right, so if you are determining the exact value of the following expressions, we have cosine of 17 pi over 12. This is not um, an angle that's on the unit circle. Um, so what you can do, one approach to this is you can rewrite this angle. Rewrite this as something over 2. Um, so you can rewrite this angle as something over two, and then you can use a half use a half angle formula, or use a half angle identity. Um, because the half angle identities have to be over two. Um, you could also try to write this as like two times something, and then you might could use a double angle identity. Um, so there's definitely more than one approach to this. Um, this is just how the book wants me to cover half angle identities. So um, we're going to take this expression in here. We're going to rewrite it as something over two. And then that something is typically an angle that's on the unit circle. So the first thing that I would suggest that you do that's going to make this a whole lot easier is if you convert this to, bless you, if you convert this to um, degree form. So I'm going to go over here to the side and convert that to degrees, 17 pi over 12 times 180 degrees over pi. Pi's cancel, pi on the top cancels with pi on the bottom. So that's, let's see, 17 over 12 times 180. Um, 255? 255. And check on your, on your unit circle. Is 255 on there? It is not. So that tells us, again, that we need to use that um, either a double angle formula or a half angle formula. Um, we're going to do the half angle on this one. Um, so here's what we have right now. 255. All right. Again, just doing this in degrees is going to make it easier because we're used to working with numbers in degree form, less familiar with um, radians. They're less like um, natural for us to work with. All right, so we need to rewrite this as something over 2. So go over here to the side. We're going to do 255 equals something over 2. How could we get this something by itself? 
Yeah, multiply by two. So that's five ten, I think. It is five ten. Yeah. Okay, five ten equals the something. All right. So now we can go back over here, write this as cosine of 510 degrees over 2. Now, at this point, this does not look a lot more helpful than what we just had. But let me show you why it's more helpful. 510 degrees, let's see, if you went all the way around the unit circle, that would be 360 degrees. So if we subtract off 360, that's just 150 more degrees. So basically, let's take a look at our unit circle. 510 degrees is where you go all the way around the unit circle and then 150 more degrees. So all the way around the unit circle and then 150 more degrees. So this is actually the angle that represents um, 510 degrees. So this is the same thing as 510. Right here. So we went all the way around the unit circle and then 510 more degrees. I mean, excuse me, 150 more. All right, so let's look at our half angle formula. So get your little formula sheet, half angle identities. Um, this one is for cosine. Um, oh, this is another good thing so, to talk about. Um, look at these half angle identities. They have square roots on um, sine and cosine, and you can see they have the little plus or minus out front. That means you have to decide if this is positive or negative. Um, so you're going to look and say, okay, go back to the original problem. 255 degrees, what quadrant would that be in? The third, that's right. So 255 degrees would be between um, 240 and 270, so it's going to be somewhere out here. So that tells us, um, let's see, we're working with cosine, so cosine is negative in this quadrant. So cosine is negative in this quadrant. So we're going to pick the negative version of this formula. Okay, so pick the negative version. So it's going to be negative square root of 1 plus cosine x over 2. X here is that something that's in your numerator. So in our case, X is, what do we say, 510? Uh, so that's the negative version square root of 1 plus cosine of X. Our X here is 510. It's the numerator over 2. Oops, sorry. Make sure you have that little negative out there. All right, so go to 510 um, on your unit circle. Cosine of 510, cosine is the x value, so that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Negative square root of 3 over 2. That's what cosine of 510 is. Like I said, this isn't terribly difficult. Most of this is going to be algebra from here. I mean, this is all algebra from here on out. Um, it's just a lot easier if you have that TI-36. All right, so from here, here's what you would do. You want to keep change flip here because right now you've got a complex fraction. Um, so in order for you to keep change flip, this numerator needs to be one expression. So it can't be a sum or a difference. It needs to be one big fraction in the top. Um, so we're going to have to get a common denominator up there, um, and then we can keep change flip. So just for a minute, we're going to ignore that denominator, um, and we're going to get a common denominator up here in the top. So pretend like this is 1 over 1. Common denominator would be 2. All right, so that's going to be negative square root. Right, multiply the top and the bottom over here by 2, so times 2, times 2. Ignore that stuff in the bottom. All right, so that's 2 over 2 plus a negative, means it's going to be minus, square root of 3 over 2. And this is all over, this radical covers everything, all over 2. 
go ahead and combine these in the top. We got a common denominator, subtract the top, bottom stays the same. All right, so big square root, subtract the numerators, denominator stays the same. 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. Now this is all over 2. Now you have this written as one big fraction in the top. You can keep change flip. And remember, if you have the TI-36, you don't have to do any of this. You can just plug it in your calculator from the beginning. You would have to just be careful about what mode you were in. All right, so keep, change, flip. This is 2 over 1, so when you flip it, it's going to become 1 over 2. Let me see if I can minimize that. Okay. Um, when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply tops, multiply bottoms. So you've got negative square root of 2 minus square root of 3 all over 4. Cool. All right, you can leave it there for the homework. They don't require you to, to simplify any further, I don't think. Um, so this should be fine. The only thing I could possibly see them doing is breaking this up and, and doing square root of the top over square root of the bottom, just because 4 is a perfect square. So they might want you to do this. It's really hard to check on these, like what, what they view as acceptable. Um, I have to like keep trying different problems and, and keep, you know, simplifying further. So it, it takes a lot of work to check and make sure what version of the right answer they'll accept. Um, but if you have any issues with that, just, you know, take a screenshot and send me an email. I can go in and manually give you credit. So I don't want you to, you know, spend a whole bunch of time uh, rationalizing denominators. That's not my homework. All right. So, again, this is this should be fine, but just in case, they may want you to separate this just because 4 is a perfect square. All right. Let's look at um, part B which is a sign problem. Determine the exact value, same direction. All right, sign of 105. This one's already in degrees. We don't have to worry about converting it over. Um, we would start off and say, okay, um, if we were using a half angle identity, then you would want to say, okay, I need to write 105 degrees as something over 2. So what would that something be? Is that 210? And that is on the unit circle. I like this example a little more because you can see like the purpose of um, why we would do the half angle identity because now this gives us something that is on the unit circle. All right, so that would be sine of 210 degrees over 2. Um, I multiplied both sides by 2. And that cancels out over here. Right, so look at your unit circle. Actually, let's look at our uh, identity sheet. Oh, no. Okay, so identity sheet, half angle identities. Um, here's our half angle identity for sign. Again, we have that plus or minus deal. We need to decide is this positive or is this negative. Um, let's think. What quadrant? Go back to the original. What quadrant is 105 in? What quadrant is 105 degrees in? Yes, yeah, second. Um, is sine positive or negative in the second quadrant? Positive. positive. So uh, we're going to choose the positive version of this identity. Uh, so you would choose the positive square root. So it's going to be square root of 1 minus cosine of whatever the numerator is, all over 2. All right, so again, this x right here comes from right here. So it's whatever that numerator was. All right, so positive square root.
You don't have to put a plus out front. If it's positive, we'll just assume that it's positive if, there, if there's nothing indicated. Uh, so that's cosine of 210 degrees all over 2. Cosine of 210, that's the x value. <clears throat> What's the x value at 210 degrees? Yep, negative root 3 over 2. Uh, big square root 1 minus negative root 3 over 2 all over 2. Everything's under the square root here. Go ahead and change that double negative to a positive. And now we got that same process again. We got to get a common denominator in the top, then you can keep change flip. Now, don't forget, same deal with this one. If you have this calculator, just make sure you're in degree mode. Sine of 105 is, and it gives you the answer simplified. Definitely worth the investment if you um, want to skip all this algebra stuff. All right, so I'm going to quickly go through the process of getting a common denominator here since this one is like literally almost the exact same as the last one. Um, so right, this is 1 over 1. Common denominator would be 2. So multiply top and bottom by 2. So it's going to be big square root 2 over 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 all over 2. Then we would, um, since we have a common denominator, we just add the top, bottom stays the same. So that's 2 plus square root of 3 over 2, all over 2. And I think I showed um, some of this trick the other day, but if you have um, a fraction like this divided by a whole number. Um, a little trick you can do is just you just multiply this denominator times this denominator. And that becomes your new denominator. Um, but if you want to see it written out the long way, you would keep change flip. So you would do um, 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 times flip the bottom one. That becomes 1 over 2. So that's 2 plus square root of 3 all over 4. And again, only thing I could see them wanting you to do here is um, separate this and do square root of the top over square root of the bottom since that denominator is perfect square. Okay, so that's the only thing I could see them, them wanting you to do. It's fine with me if you do this by hand and you leave it here for the test. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah that's because um, they take and they separate this and um, it, this is technically not in like simplest form. So um, they take it down even further. Um, and I think they just multiply it by itself is what they're doing. All right, so, yeah, if you do it in the calculator, I was I saw this too the other day, and I was like, that's so weird. Like, why does it look that much different? And so what I did to check was I converted this to a decimal, so that was 0.965, and then I did the same thing um, here, 2 plus, plus square root of 3, sorry, over 4, and then I converted it to a decimal, and they're the same. Yeah, so that's one way you can check. All right, so I would say that was the hardest ones of what we have left today. Um, definitely the most work. You can see, I, once again, I, I underestimated how much work this was going to take us. The rest of these, I want you to pay close attention to the directions. Um, and I'll try to remind you of this on the day of the test. Um, the directions here say, use the product to sum identities to rewrite the expressions as a sum or a difference. So that means they don't want you to evaluate this. So this is not something that you're going to plug in the calculator. They just want you to apply the identity um, and then simplify. All right, so product to sum, let's look at these formulas. You can see these all have the one half out front. 
So product to sum is right here. They all have the one half out front. And let's look at how they're separated. Um, this first one is for expressions where you have sine times cosine. Here is cosine times sine. Then we have sine times sine and then cosine times sine. X and Y just represent different angles. All right, so X and Y represent the different angles. And every one of them has this one half out front. You have to be a little bit careful with the signs. You can see this one has a plus in the middle. This one has a minus. This one has a minus. This one has a plus. And as well with the signs on the inside of the parentheses. So just be very careful when you're writing these identities down um, and when you're applying them to these problems. All right, so our first problem says sine of 95 degrees times cosine of 75. So sine times cosine. So you look over here, you look for sine times cosine. That's the first one. So in our example, x is 95, y is 75 degrees. So x is 95, y is 75. So I'm going to start by just writing the identity. You don't have to write out the formula. Um, I'm just doing this to show if anyone's looking at this later, watching this video later, so they know which identity I'm using. Right, so sine of x plus y plus sine of x minus y. Right, so just being super careful when I'm writing down the formula and making sure I'm getting all those signs correct. All right, so here's x, here's y. So go ahead and plug those in. Leave that one half out front um, for now. I'll show you. It's fine if you leave it out front for the test. Um, and I'll show you what you can do with it if you want to. Um, get rid of it out front if you don't like the way that looks. All right, so we have sine of x plus y. So 95 plus 75. What's 95 plus 75? 170. Alright, so sine of 170 degrees. Make sure you put the little degrees on there. And then plus x minus y, sine of x minus y um, is 20 degrees. And you can stop here. This is all they want. I know it seems like, how is this any better than this? It's not. They just wanted you to apply the identity and rewrite the expression. So you can stop here. The only other thing that if you wanted to, to get rid of this one half out front, if it looks weird to you, you can write it as sine of 170 degrees plus, let me put this in parentheses just to keep the notation consistent. You can write it all like over two. Um, that's the same thing as multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two. So you can write it like this if you want to, but I would say just stop here. This is fine. Right, so the whole purpose of practicing this is that when you when we get to solving equations in the next section, sometimes it's easier to solve a particular equation when it's written as a product. Sometimes it's easier to solve it when it's written as a sum or a difference. So this is just practicing using this identity so that we can um, utilize this identity when we get to solving equations. Uh, and then this next one, just wanted to show you what happens when you have a coefficient out front. We're going to do the same thing here. Um, this one is sine times sine, so look on your formula sheet um, for sine times sine. It's the third one. Sine times sine. It says it's one half times cosine of x minus y minus cosine of x plus y. All right, so writing down the formula, it's going to be, you're going to just leave that five out front. So you're going to have five. You can do like a big parenthesis, and then one half. Then they have a bracket. And again, I'm just writing the formula down. You can go ahead and plug in your, your values. X minus Y minus cosine X plus Y. Big bracket, close big parentheses. All right, go ahead and plug in your values. This is X, this is Y. All right, so if you are um, simplifying this, you would just multiply five times one half is five over two. Big bracket, cosine of x minus y. So x minus two x is what? Negative x. Negative x, good. Minus 
cosine of x plus y, so that's x plus 2x is 3x. Now you're almost done. Um, your homework, and this goes for the test as well, you're never allowed to leave a negative in your angle. So we got to go back to our identity sheet. Um, even in odd identities over here from 8.1, it says cosine of negative x is the same thing as cosine x. All right, so that's an even function. It means cosine of negative 90 is the same as cosine of 90. So um, we can just get rid of that negative according to this identity. So that's 5 over 2 bracket cosine of x minus cosine of 3x. Don't try to combine these. Don't try to do anything crazy. Leave it here. So I know it looks like you haven't done anything. We, we haven't simplified. This is not more simple. This is just an alternative way to write this. All right, and then the last ones, um, part set or question number seven, these are the sum to product, so we're going backwards. Um, sum to product are right here. This is where you start with a sum or a difference and you write it as a product. All right, so you can see instead of having the one half out front, this time we've got twos. And then very important to notice, this is the only one, this last one, where you have a negative out front. All right, so be careful there. Um, super easy to, to miss that. All right, so sine plus sine, sine minus sine, cosine plus cosine, cosine minus cosine. You can see um, there's no formulas for like sine plus cosine. Okay, so it's got to be same trig function in order to use these identities. All right, so ours, let's look at ours. Ours is sine of 65 degrees plus sine of 145 degrees. And directions, I forgot to read them, but the directions just say use the sum for product identities to rewrite the following expressions of the product. So we have sine plus sine. So you go to your formula sheet, sine plus sine. That is this first one right here, sine plus sine. Right, so I'm going to write the formula down. Sine of x plus sine of y equals 2 times sine of x plus y over 2 cosine of x minus y over 2. All right, here's x, here's y. All right, so that's going to be 2 times sine, what's x plus y? 210. 210. 210 degrees over 2, cosine of x minus y, what's that, negative 80 degrees over 2. Go ahead and simplify these fractions, 210 over 2 with 105. Cosine of negative 80 over 2, that's negative 40 degrees. And then once again, you got to get rid of this negative in here. Um, cosine is an even function. Um, that means that it doesn't matter if it's negative. It's going to be this equal to the same value if it was positive. Uh, so that's going to be 2 times sine of 105 degrees times cosine of positive 40 degrees. Got to have the degrees in there, or I'm going to have to take off like half a point. So don't forget the degree symbol. That might be something that you want to write at the top of your formula sheet. Don't forget the degree symbol. Um, super, super common mistake. All right. And once again, I know this doesn't look like you're done, but you are done. Like you don't need to plug this in the calculator. All right. Next one, very similar. We have cosine minus cosine. Look at your formula sheet. Look for cosine minus cosine. That's that last one with the negative out front. All right, so cosine minus cosine. I'm going to go ahead and write the formula down. You do not have to write this down unless you want to. Okay. Go ahead and label X and Y. X and Y. 
right, so that's negative 2 times sine of x plus y over 2. Right, so 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Um, treat the pi's like they're x's, so that would be 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. So x plus y is 2 pi over 2. Don't forget the over 2 in the, um, within this angle here. All right, and then sine of x minus y over 2, so 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. Again, treat the pi's like x's. 3 pi minus pi, um, so 3 minus 1 is 2 pi. 2 pi over 2 is just pi. So that's pi over 2. Only thing to simplify here is that 2 over 2. That cancels. So that becomes negative 2 times sine of pi times sine of pi over 2. Now, if you feel more comfortable adding and subtracting these if they were in um, degrees, you could totally convert 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2 to degrees. Um, you just want to make sure that whatever your original problem was in, if it was in radians or degrees, that's what your answer should be in. So if you convert it over to degrees, don't forget to convert it back to radians for your final answer. Um, if you're plugging it in, like to find an exact value, it doesn't matter. Um, but here, since we were just leaving it in terms of sign, you do have to make sure, you know, the units match the units. All right, the last one, this is a, um, this is a more complicated one. It's not terribly difficult if you just separate it and do it, do the numerator first, then do the denominator second. So I'm going to try to get this as large as possible. Let's see if that'll focus. There we go. All right, so we have sine of 7x plus sine of 3x over cosine of 7x minus cosine of 3x. Um, so go, my suggestion to you is to take these and separate them. So do the top by itself, simplify it, then do the bottom by itself, simplify it, and then come back and combine them together. Um, I put this one on the practice test as well. I just finished the practice test. Um, I put it on the practice test, but I wouldn't put one this difficult or this long on the homework, but my thought process was that if you can do this one, then you can definitely do the one that's going to be on the test because this is going to be harder than the one on the test. All right, so I'm going to take this numerator, go over here to the side, and simplify it. Sine of 7x plus sine of 3x. All right, so this is a sum, so we're looking at sum to product. Sine plus sine, that's that first um, identity up here, sine plus sine. All right, so in our example, let's see, x is 7x, y is 3x. So let's see, that's going to be 2 times sine of 7x plus 3x is 10x over 2 times cosine of x minus y over 2, so that's 7x minus 3x over 2, so that's 4x over 2. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see that. Just simplify the fractions. Um, 10 over 2 is 5, 4 over 2 is 2. So that's 2 times sine of 5x times cosine of 2x. And you're good to go. You can leave it there. All right, so that's our simplified numerator. This is our simplified numerator. Now we got to go down here and simplify that denominator, which was cosine 7x minus cosine 3x. All right, cosine minus cosine, that's that bottom one again with the negative out front. Be careful there. Negative 2 times sine of x plus y over 2. So 7x plus 3x is 10x over 2 times sine of x minus y. So 7x minus 3x is 4x over 2. Simplify this. 10 over 2 is 5. 4 over 2 is 2. And then we're going to put this all back together. And 
see if we can simplify this. All right, so let's see what we have. All right, here's our simplified numerator. Here's our denominator. I right, put them all together. That's going to be 2 times sine of 5x times cosine of 2x over negative 2 sine of 5x sine of 2x. Do you see anything that can cancel? The signs? And what else? The two, yep. Oh, you mean these X's here? These, got to leave these alone because they're like inside of the trig identities, but those twos out front do cancel. So leave these guys alone um, because they're inside of the trig function, um, but you can cancel the twos. Yes, yeah. All right, so in the top, we have cosine of 2X. In the bottom, we have negative sine of 2x. Okay, ignore that sine, or sorry, ignore that negative for a second. Um, what's cosine over sine? Cotangent, yeah. I was about to say, maybe I did this wrong. Um, and I got that from right here. One of those, uh, what do they call them? Quotient identities. So cosine over sine is cotangent. Um, so this is going to be negative cotangent because it's negative. So when you have a negative in the denominator um, of something like this, it doesn't matter if you put the negative in the bottom or the negative in the top or off to the side. It's all the same. So this is going to be negative cotangent of, since the inside the parentheses is the same, we both have 2x for, the, for our angles. So that would stay a 2x. So we would only be allowed to do that if our angles were the same. So if we had 2x here, 2x here. If you had something like cosine of 4x over sine of 2x, there's nothing you can do there. Okay, so the, the insides of the parentheses have to match. All right, so this is negative cotangent to 2x. Yours should look very similar to this. You just might not have a 2x here. It might be like 3x or 4x or something. Um, but yours, every, every time I refreshed and looked at similar problems, they all came out to cotangent, or negative cotangent, I should say. But like I said, I put this on the practice test, but this will not be on the test. It's not going to be this hard. I might just pick, you know, um, just this part to do on the test. Like, just simplify this, or just simplify this. So it won't be both of these combined together. It'll be simple. Um, but if you can do this one, you can definitely do the one that's going to be on the test. All right, let me stop this recording. Um.